السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه first of all um, you know سبحان الله it's been a very difficult morning um, hearing about all of the um, attacks around the world obviously on a mass scale um, what's happened in Iraq um, سبحان الله was Iraq uh, today Bangladesh yesterday uh, Somalia the day before that Istanbul the day before that and um, Obviously, here at home in the U.S., uh, lots of hate crimes, lots of attacks outside of Masajid, lots of people being attacked outside the Masajid. Um, so we ask Allah to have mercy on all the victims that have that have been killed all around the world. But here at home, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, particularly I posted about our brother Arsalan um, to Jamul from uh, Houston, and Subhanallah, Arsalan uh, was one of the people that would watch Quran 30 for 30, um, you know, on, on, I know that he texted me and I know he was keeping up. I don't know how regularly he was keeping up, but he had texted me about watching Quran 30 for 30. So, um, you know, today he's in ICU because he was shot and stabbed outside of his masjid in Houston, um, after Salat al on his way to Salat al-Fajr. So please make dua for, for him as well. Um, a very beautiful, beautiful brother. Alhamdulillah, we're hearing that he's stable, um, but he's he's heavily sedated. He's in ICU and he's still not out of the danger zone. So please keep him in your dua and keep all of the people that have been uh, affected in these last few days in your duas, and um, also be vigilant, inshallah, ta'ala, outside of your own masajid um, in these last few days. Be vigilant, inshallah as you go to your masajid, but at the same time, don't stop going to the masjid, you know, we cannot buckle to fear, so keep on going to the masjid, be regular in the masjid, tonight's the 29th night, it's a blessed night, it's the last odd night of Ramadan, so don't stop going to the masjid um, because of these things, so we ask Allah to have mercy on the people that have uh, left us in the last few days, uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure our brothers in New York who were attacked, our brother in, 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 in Houston, Arsalan, um, who was attacked, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our communities. Allahumma ameen. So, um, that's why I started Quran 30 for 30 late, to be honest with you. I've been kind of engulfed in the news, um, just following up what's happening with uh, Arsalan in Houston. Um, but inshallah ta'ala, we'll go ahead and we'll continue now. So, now we are on, um, now we're in just 28. So, today's the 28th day of Ramadan, and we're in just 28. And uh, just 28 contains... Uh, I think nine surahs. It starts off with Surah Al Mujadila. And a few days ago, I posted something about Surah Al Mujadila. Surah Al Mujadila um, is a Madani surah. And in fact, most of these surahs, if not all of them, are Madani surahs. So, uh, Juz 28 is an interesting Juz because it has the style of Makki Quran, but it is Madani Quran. It's Quran that was revealed in Medina. So, there's short surahs that were revealed in Medina. Uh, that deal a lot with the issues that were arising with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and some of the administrative issues in Medina um, and some of the rulings, um, you know, in that new in that new uh, state of theirs. So, um, in any case, Surah Al-Mujadila is, uh, is a short surah. It's, it's only uh, 22 ayat, but it is a Madani surah. So it has mentions like in Medina, it has law, it has um, mentions of the hypocrites because in Medina that became a really big problem. And it starts off with the um, with the mention of Al Mujadila, the woman who pleads, Khawla bin Thalaba radiAllahu taala anha, who came complaining to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the mistreatment of her husband towards her. And um, Al Mujadila is the one who argues or the one who pleads, but Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Wa tashtaki ilallah," that she was complaining to Allah subhanahu wa taala. She was making du'a to Allah subhanahu wa taala, and Allah subhanahu wa taala heard her, and Allah subhanahu wa taala took up her cause. Now, subhanAllah, one of the things about this surah, which is very, very, very powerful, is that this surah is the only surah in the Qur'an in which the name of Allah is mentioned in every single ayah. Every single ayah of Surah Al-Mujadila 
has the name Allah. Why? Uh, some of the ulama said the wisdom of that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing how he hears the one who pleads, how he hears amman yujibu al-mutarra idha da'a, who hears the one who calls when they're in need, wayakshifu su and removes um, harm and evil, a'ilahun ma'allah, is there any God beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was hearing each and every single one of her complaints and Allah hears the complaints of al mazlum of the one who's being uh, harmed and oppressed. So this surah subhanAllah mentions the name of Allah each in each and every single ayah and that shows you the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, you know for those who have iman in their hearts and that call upon him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, will not forget about them. The next surah is Surah Al-Hashr. Uh, surah Al-Hashr uh, you know, comes after the surah, which mentions Allah subhanahu wa taala in every surah, in every ayah, and um, and it 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 covers um, some very interesting rules. So one of so so some of the rules it covers is uh, the distribution um, of of belongings after the believers engage in in combat, how to distribute the spoils amongst the poor, the needy, the weak, and so on and so forth. Um, <coughs> it establishes a principle. Um, in, in the seventh ayah, whatever the Prophet uh, gives you, uh, then take it, and whatever he tells you to refrain from, then abstain from it. So, the, the idea of following the Sunnah of the Prophet, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions at the end of the surah, though. So, the previous surah, which is Surah Al Mujadila, Allah's name is mentioned in every single ayah. In this surah, Surah Al Hashr, at the end of the surah, you have the most beautiful description of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Or first it says, So oh you who believe, be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pay attention to that which you have put forth for tomorrow because you don't know uh, when you're going to meet your Creator, what taqullah and Allah khabirun bima ta'malun, be aware of your Lord. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa taala is aware, is fully acquainted and aware of what uh, you do. Wala takunu kaladina nasullah fa ansahum anfusahum. Do not be like those who came before you. So Allah subhanahu wa taala condemns Bani Israel here, or at least the wicked ones from Bani Israel. Don't be like those who came before you, who forgot Allah subhanahu wa taala. So Allah caused them to forget themselves. So Surah Al-Mujadila is a woman that kept her relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala despite all of her difficult circumstances. She continued to call upon Allah and she never uh, forgot Him. And so Allah did not forget her uh, or cause her to forget herself, which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds with a surah in which His name is in every single ayah. But here, a people that forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their times of ease, so Things became easy for them. They forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah caused them to forget themselves. And they are amongst the losers. لَا يَسْتَوِي أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ وَأَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ هُمُ الْفَائِزُونَ The people of hellfire are not equal to the people of paradise. The people of paradise are those who have ultimately succeeded. لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَى جَبَلٍ لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ if we were to have revealed this Quran upon a mountain, it would have flattened it out of its awe, out of out of its awe of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. If you remember Surah Al Hadid in the last juz, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Alam yatni lilladina amanu an takhsha qulubuhum li dikrillah." Isn't it time for those who believe to humble their hearts, to soften their hearts to the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? And Allah mentions that. He gives life to 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 lifeless earth. He gives life to the to, to dead land um, after it has produced nothing. So likewise, as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sends rain upon uh, upon dead earth and produces from it vegetation and so on and so forth, the revelation is powerful enough that it could resuscitate a dead heart. So here, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Had this Quran been revealed to a mountain." you would have seen that mountain humble itself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You would have seen that mountain shatter out of its awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how can the hearts then um, not be moved by this reminder, by this Qur'an? لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ A direct response to أَلَمْ يَأْنِي لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْ تَخْشْعَ قُلُوبُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ 
So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes that, then you have the most beautiful discourse of the names and the attributes of Allah in the Qur'an. Who Allah? He is Allah. Who is Allah? Well, in the previous surah, his name Allah was in each and every single ayah to let you know that he's in charge and that he hears you. Who Allah? He is Allah. Alladhi la ilaha illahu. The one who has no deity beside him, no God besides him. Who are Rahman Alimul Ghaibi wa Shahada? He knows that which is seen and that which is in the unseen. So he knows the unseen and he knows that which is witnessed. Actually, he started off with knowing that which is unseen and that which is witnessed, because knowing that which is unseen is something that purely belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alimul Ghaib wa Shahada, who are Rahman Rahim, and he is the most uh, uh, compassionate and the most merciful. هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون. So the first ayah of this sequence establishes Allah's knowledge and His mercy despite that knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa taala knows everything and Allah subhanahu wa taala shows mercy uh, despite knowing the unseen and despite knowing the seen. The second ayah. Establishes Allah's control and His power. Al Malik, Al Qudus, Al Salam, Al Mu'min, Al Muhaymin, Al Aziz, Al Jabbar, Al Mutakabbir. So He's the omnipotent King that is sanctified, that is above all, that is uh, in charge, that is um, uh, ever noble, ever, you know, always bestowed with honor, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Jabbar, Al Mutakabbir. He is overwhelming in His power, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the only one. The only one that could have pride ascribed to him in a positive way, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Subhanallah amma yushrikun. <clears throat> how perfect is Allah, you know, and how uh, how 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 glorified is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have any partner ascribed to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huallahu al-khaliqul bari ul musawwir, lahu al asma ul husna. And he is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the creator. He's the originator. He's the one who molds everything in the way that he sees fit subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and to him belong the most beautiful of names. Lahu al-asma'ul husna. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in another ayah in the Quran, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ husna فَدِعُوهُ بِهَا And to Allah belong the most beautiful of names. So call upon him with those names. And of course the previous surah, Surah Al-Mujadila, is a woman that called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his most beautiful names. And Allah responded to her, لَهُ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى يُسَبِّحُ لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Everything in the heavens and the earth glorifies him and declares his perfection. وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Now, we just came out of, or we're actually with, you know, we just came out of المسبحات, some of the surahs that declare the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that everything glorifies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's part of his being Aziz and Hakim, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always bestowed with honor and does not need the people to acknowledge him or to call upon him for him to be Aziz, but he is Aziz no matter what. And whoever calls upon him becomes Aziz by extension, becomes honorable by calling upon the most honorable subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the next verse is Surah Al-Mumtahina. Um, and Al-Mumtahina um, you know, is, is, is a short Madani surah um, with, uh, you know, with, with, with 13 uh, ayat and it, it mentions the command of uh, the commandment of verifying the iman of the women that came to the to, you know that made hijrah to Medina. Um, the reason being is that there were obviously in this situation you had some people in Medina that were spying um, and that were taking news back to the people of Mecca. Uh, so you had the, the story of Hatib ibn Abi Balta who sent um, a messenger who tried to inform the mushrikeen of Mecca of the plans of the Prophet ﷺ to enter into Mecca. And he did that because he was afraid that if Mecca was conquered, or I'm sorry, if the Muslims went out to Mecca and they were defeated, then uh, he would have no one to show him mercy because the, the other Muslims, the Muhajirin in particular from Mecca, they had blood ties, they had relationships. And so he was thinking that in his situation, um, no one would, would uh, show him any mercy. And, um, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him. He made tawbah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him for his mention and um, or for his for his uh, deed, um, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says at the end of the surah, La tak, you know, Ya Yuhaladina Amnu O you who believe, do not take allies from people uh, who Allah who have earned Allah's ghadab, who have earned Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's anger, 
um, you know, and, and, and that it's not going to benefit you whatsoever. So trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't take those people as allies that are actively fighting your prophet and they're actively uh, trying to kill him and so on and so forth. Uh, the next surah is Surah As-Saf. Yeah, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ma fil samawati wa ma fil ard wa huwa al-'aziz al-hakim. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu lima taquluna ma la taf'alun? Kabura maqtan 'inda Allah an taqulu ma la taf'alun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, "O you who believe, why do you say that which you don't do?" The most repulsive thing in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that you is, is that your words and your actions do not match. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a condemnation here of hypocrisy. And hypocrisy manifests itself in many different ways. So in one situation, it's those people who uh, who opposed Musa alayhi salam. Musa when Musa alayhi salam spoke to his people and he ordered them to go forth and uh, they disobeyed Musa alayhi salam, they turned their backs on Musa alayhi salam. Wallahu la yahdi al-qawm al Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not guide these wicked people. And then Isa alayhi salam giving the glad tidings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam to come after him, and his name is Ahmed. Uh, so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi specif- or, or Isa alayhi salam specifying the name and the description of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But Bani Israel turned away from him as well. So <coughs> this surah sort of gives the good news uh, to the believers. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ أَمَنُوا هَلْ أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى تِجَارَةٍ تُنْجِيكُمْ مِنْ عَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ and so on and so forth that you know on the second page of Surah Al-Saf Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, the believers the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being favored and, uh, and, and doing the things that will, att- that will attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will earn them the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and going forth and and you know focusing themselves to billahi wa rasulihi that they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they believe in the messenger sallallahu alaihi they enjoy good they forbid evil they you know they're constantly <coughs> they're constantly sincerely applying themselves to the message of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so the good news is given here that this ummah is the next ummah it's the ummah that is favored after the ummah of bani israel it's the ummah now that has been tasked with all of these things that the previous ummas were tasked with and they did not bear properly. So the end of the surah is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, you know, mentioning to us Isa alayhi salam speaking to his disciples saying man ansari ilallah who will be my helpers uh, you know, or, or who will be those who help uh, spread the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will be the ansar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the helpers the helpers of God those that will go forth with me qala al hawariyun and nahnu ansarullah and the hawariyun the disciples said we are the helpers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fa amana ta'ifatun min bani israil wa kafara ta'ifa fa ayadna alladhina amanu ala aduwihim fa asbahu zahirin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the the sincerity of the disciples and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported the believers of Bani Israel and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, you know, uh, allowed the disbelievers of Bani Israel to earn his wrath. So Allah condemns hypocrisy and ultimately, you know, the message of Surah Al-Saf is huwa ladhi arsala rasoolahu bil huda wa deen al-haqqi li yudhirahu ala deen kulli that the message of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has come and that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has come and that this is the favored ummah, this is the ummah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has now placed the risala within, placed the message within. And subhanAllah, it's interesting because we don't get the specifics of the hypocrisy of Bani Israel, but we are warned of the hypocrisy of Bani Israel. But in Surah Al-Jumu'ah, in Surah Al-Jumu'ah, which is uh, about obviously Friday, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a very specific um, means of Bani Israel turning back, turning their backs on the message of Allah which is their disobedience in regards to the Sabbath, in regards to Yom Sabt. So the way that they tried to escape the obligation of, of, of observing the Sabbath, that there were disbelievers, um, you know, and there were hypocrites that tried to escape the Sabbath, that tried to escape observing um, the Sabbath. And this was, مَثَلُهُمْ كَمَثَلِ الْحِمَارِ يَحْمِلُ أَسْفَارَ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ حُمِّلُ التَّوْرَاتِ كَمَثَلِ الْحِمَارِ يَحْمِلُ أَسْفَارَ so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that those who were entrusted with the Torah or like, you know, in this situation, the hypocrites were like donkeys with books stacked on their backs. Meaning what? 
they were not internalizing anything. And so the hypocrites don't internalize. They, it's like they have the knowledge, they have those books stacked on their back, but they don't internalize. Instead, they use that knowledge uh, to divert from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to turn away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so on and so forth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the, the inability of them to uh, internalize the purposeful um, you know, turning away from the message and not, not absorbing it the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded them to absor absorb it. Previous surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, isn't it time for the hearts to submit themselves to the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't be like those who came before you whose hearts became hard. Their hearts became hard. So they still had the knowledge, they still had the scripture and so on and so forth, but their hearts became hard. Time passed and their hearts became hard. So their hearts no longer absorbed the message. And here in particular, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it became to a point like the books were stacked on their backs. Nothing was going inside. Nothing was being internalized. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in Surah Al-Jumu'ah, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا نُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ فَاسْعَوْا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَذَرُوا الْبَيْعَ O you who believe when the command of Jum'ah, when the call of the Friday prayer is made, rush to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and forsake your trade. You know, do as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you to do. Observe the يَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ Observe the, the, the call of the Friday prayer the way that you are supposed to. Do not be like those who did not observe the Sabbath properly before you. So sanctify this day, treat this day, treat this prayer the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you to treat this prayer. And in it, there is a mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah did not command us to observe the entire day of Friday, but rather just that one hour, just the Jum'ah prayer, right? So that's a mercy upon this ummah that all you have to do is observe this one hour. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that once the salah is over, <coughs> then you can go ahead and you can continue to pursue your livelihood. But keep yourself engaged with dhikr so that you may succeed. Because that's where true success comes from. If you don't keep yourself engaged with dhikr as you leave the rituals, then your hearts will become hard. And you go back to the same problem of having books stacked on your back, but failing to internalize, um, uh, failing to internalize the um, the message. So the next surah is Surah Al Munafiqun, the surah of the hypocrites, which identifies the hypocrites from the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So enough speaking about the hypocrites that came before in Bani Israel. We have our own share of hypocrites now, and so this surah. Uh, deals with the munafiqun and deals with the characteristics of the munafiqun in this particular ummah that they are actively plotting against the Prophet and actively trying to destabilize the ummah, even though they portray themselves as being part of uh, part of this ummah. So <clears throat> it's it's a it's a major problem. They appear to be respectable people, but they're not respectable people. Instead, they are constantly trying to destabilize. Um, you know, the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala warns the believers at the end of the Surah uh, not to fall into the traps of hypocrisy, to keep themselves free from the traps of hypocrisy. And then finally, you know, you have the last stretch of Surahs, which is at taghabun Surah at taghabun Surah at talaq and Surah at tahrim So the, the rules of divorce um, and, and some of the rules uh, governing divorce um, how people should should uh, you know should should uh, act in, in in terms of divorce, in terms of alimony, in terms of child custody. Uh, what are the customs before Islam that are now forbidden? So Surah Al Mujadila was obviously in regards to an impermissible form of divorce, which was known as lihar. So doing away with lihar, doing away with the pre-Islamic customs, and then setting forth um, a procedure, a process. Uh, <coughs> setting forth a procedure of process, a process that will keep the believers mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Interestingly enough, in Surah Al-Talaq, uh, ayahs 1, 2, 4, and 5 all command taqwa, that a person fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to the matter of divorce. The Prophet says, اِتَّقُوا اللَّهَ فِي نِسَائِكُمْ Fear Allah in the way that you deal with your spouses. Fear Allah in the way that you deal with your spouses. Do not be unjust towards your spouses. Do not be unjust towards your wives. 
Of course, that's another manifestation of hypocrisy that a person is able to portray goodness outside of the home, but when they are inside of the home, they are neglectful and they are hypocritical and that they deal with their families in horrible ways. And the Prophet ﷺ taught, Al-Aqrabuna awla bil ma'ruf, those who are closest to you are most deserving of seeing your good behavior. So do not be like those who bring, who bring forth uh, or who, who produce ugliness inside the house and produce beauty only outside the house. And instead, you need to worry about your family. So in Surah Al-Tahreem, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Protect yourselves and protect your families from the hellfire. Protect yourselves and protect your families from the hellfire. Qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara wa quduha nasu wal hijara. It's, it, you know, the fire of, of hell, is its fuel is, is man and stones. Alayha malaikatun ghiladun shidad. And upon it are angels, severe angels. لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون. Those angels do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa taala with any command, and they do exactly as they are told. And Allah subhanahu wa taala gives us the command of Tawbah for the believers. يا أيها الذين آمنوا توبوا إلى الله توبة نصوحة. O you who believe, repent to Allah subhanahu wa taala with a sincere repentance. Turn back to Allah subhanahu wa taala with a sincere repentance. يوم لا يخز الله النبي والذين آمنوا معه so the day that Allah will not disgrace the Prophet ﷺ or the believers that are with him, and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the light that is coming forth from those believers. In Surah Al-Hadid, in the previous juz, Allah mentioned the um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the parting of the hypocrites from the believers, where a barrier is placed between the hypocrites and the believers. The believers have light and the hypocrites have no light. And the hypocrites are calling upon the believers, asking them for light. Here in Juz 28, we're talking about the believers already having light. And they're calling upon Allah saying, رَبَّنَا أَتْمِمْ لَنَا نُورَنَا Oh Allah, maintain and preserve our light for us. Don't let our light go away or don't let it be extinguished. وَاخْفِرْ لَنَا And forgive us. And verily you are upon all things capable and powerful. And finally, subhanAllah, the way that this surah ends, ضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا امْرَأَةَ نُوحٍ وَامْرَأَةَ لُوط so we have an example in uh, the wives of Lut and the wives of Nuh alayhim um, salam <clears throat> that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not save them because they were married to prophets. So them being married to prophets did not save them because the, the, the accountability is upon each person. It's upon each person to show belief, to accept the message and to not turn back uh, away from this message. And at the same time, just as the wives of, of, uh, of Lut and Nuh uh, were not saved because their husbands uh, were prophets, Asiya radiallahu ta'ala anha was not doomed because her husband, Fir'aun, was the worst human being ever created. So Asiya bint Muzahim radiallahu ta'ala anha wa alayhi salam is a woman who perfected her iman despite being married to Fir'aun. So if a woman can come out of the house of Fir'aun with perfect iman, and, a and two people can come out of the houses of prophets and they could be destroyed, then that shows you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will examine your heart individually and each person will be looked at individually. And subhanAllah, the most beautiful thing of this, by the way, uh, Asiya bint Muzahim is also complaining about her husband. In the beginning of Juz 28, you have an Mujadila complaining about her husband. Asiya is complaining about the oppression of her husband. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears her and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows her her place in Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaces what she lost in this world with the most beautiful reward in the hereafter, which is the companionship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and a palace in paradise. So she lost the palace of this world and the companionship of her husband Fir'aun and was oppressed by him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered her plea and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her what he gave her just as Allah answered Al-Mujadila for something that was dunyawi in its matter, something that was worldly in its matter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered Asiya alayhi salam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions wa Maryam ibn Imran and Mary the daughter of Imran um alati ahsanat farjaha fa nafakhna fihi min ruhina wa saddaqat bi kalimati rabbiha wa kutubihi wa kanat min al-qanitin this woman that was an example of righteousness for all men and for all women of all time so subhanallah it starts off with a woman just 28 starts off with a woman complaining to Allah and Allah answering her and then the characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and keeping your heart soft and not being a hypocrite and being sincere, it ends with a woman complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entering into 
We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the people of Jannah and forgive us. Allahumma ameen. Uh, again, please make dua for our brother Arsalan, for all our brothers and sisters that have been killed in the last few days, all that have been attacked, and ask Allah to protect our communities. Uh, the charity that I'll be giving you guys today is actually Helping Hands uh, for Relief and Development. Uh, I'm actually, inshallah ta'ala, taking a group of young people to, you know, or going to be accompanying a group of young people in Jordan as we expose ourselves to the Syrian refugees and the Palestinian refugees in Jordan, inshallah ta'ala. So obviously the more goods that we can take with us, inshallah, as we meet these refugees um, in Jordan, um, you know, it, the, the better, inshallah ta'ala. So I'm going to post a link, inshallah, to uh, Helping Hands. And I hope, inshallah ta'ala, you'll help us uh, take more goods, inshallah ta'ala, more relief uh, to our brothers and sisters in these camps. Barakallahu feekum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.